Welcome tonight. You guys are in for a treat tonight. I believe that God has a word for each of us. We have a dear friend here in the house tonight. He's not just a guest. He's not even just a friend. He's family here. This is our dearly beloved brother in the Lord who's doing ministry all over. He, pre he goes to our we have him at Arizona campus. We have him at our LA campus. We have him all over. He's here with us tonight, guys. I want us to give the warmest, most loving, most excited welcome to our dear friend, our brother, Prophet Rob Sanchez. Come on, let's give him a way what outreach welcome. Yes. Well, praise the living God. Why don't you take your seat for just a moment? I know we're going to probably stand up here in a little bit. But this is, I, I, I might as well just get this out of my way. I want to let you know at the end of service, we're going to have our newest book, Discovering and Releasing Your Prophetic Voice for Sale. If you want to learn about the prophetic, it'll be in the back. I'm going to try and go and visit the table and be able to sign a copy if you're interested. Anybody want to learn more about the prophetic? Raise your hand. Your hand was the first one I saw. Come get this. All right. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Thank you. All right. I want to let you know that we, LIVG Ministries, just purchased our first building. So we are in a building fund and what we're doing is we have merchandise that goes towards the building fund. I know nobody needs an LIVG tumbler. I know that none of you need another tumbler in your house. But let me tell you why you want the LIVG tumbler. I'll tell you why. On the back it has a QR code. Say QR code. How many of you believe the word of the Lord is important? This Tumblr has over 1,500 prophetic words on it. So every time you scan it, a brand new word comes up. You take it out and you share it with your family, your friends, God will speak to them. We've seen people get saved in high school. We've seen people get saved in Ubers, in Lyfts. We've seen people get saved simply because they scanned it. I like this one, two, three rows back, young lady in all black, going like this with the football sign. Come get it. So these will be available in the back. And their last thing, I believe in interactive wear. So what we've done is we've come out with our LIVG logo t-shirt. And for those of you that follow us on social media, we always release, I hear the Lord saying, we have a show called What the Heavens Are Saying. And we have taken the QR code and put it on the back of the shirt. So while you're standing in line, at any place, such as Walmart, the gas station, a theme park, people begin to scan your back and God begins to give them a prophetic word. This is an extra large. Who's an extra large? Come here. Holla oh, look at, he just, he took that as come here. There you go. God bless you. All right. Before I take off, I got to give honor to the set man and woman of God. There is none like Pastor Lisa and Marco. I want to honor you for your years of yes. I am so grateful for a man and a woman of God that has simply taken a three-letter word and made it a lifestyle and a commitment to God. Every morning when they get up, they have to use that three-letter word, yes, God. And what do they do? They lay down their lives so people all over San Bernardino, all over Medford, Oregon, all over Statford, Arizona, all over the Los Angeles area. Can you tell I visited some of your houses? As pastors preaching, we declare the glory to be upon him and the move of God continue to pour out of this ministry. I am so grateful that I could come to a house, look around and be so encouraged, but even greater, I come and I catch vision. I come to your house and I get as inspired as any other person. I want to say thank you, Pastor, for your yes, your family's yes. 
I want to say thank you to their children. And let me tell you why. Children that grow up in ministry are often put under microscopes and looked at hard. But I am so thankful that their children, their daughters all serve the Lord. Their families are being raised up and used mightily. But did you know who the greatest givers in the church are? It's their children. They have to share their mom, their dad with all of you. How many of you know you might have a little issue, but thank God he's working on you. But thank you, all of your children. Thank you for sharing your mom and dad with the world. And thank you, the Way World Outreach, for making a difference. I honor the set man and woman of God. Come on, put your hands together. Thank the Lord for this mighty, mighty kingdom couple and their leadership and staff. There's no staff, no leadership that's finer. I want to say thank you for all your love, your grace, your support. You've made a difference in my life. About a year ago, I came down with Bell Palsy. My whole face fell. And in that time, I preached right through it. And can I tell you what the way did? They sent us an offering and said these words, Prophet Rob, we're praying for you. We want you to take some rest and get better. I, am, I just wanted to publicly say thank you for your guys' kindness, your love, your support. God bless you all. All right, I'm spending valuable time with all this stuff, so let me just jump in. The title of my message tonight is simply called The Kiss That Changed Everything. I believe the Spirit of God wants to kiss this house, but he wants to bring a wisdom and a revelation and an understanding to each and every one of you. So Father, have a, I step back, you step forth, drop in this house, build your people, kiss them with the kiss of your kingdom and transform their lives in Jesus name. At the beginning of the year, God dropped the prophetic word into my spirit according to the number 23, the year that we're in. 20 means redemption, 23 in Hebrew means from death to life. As I was worshiping, the spirit of God said, this is the year that families that have been covered in darkness, the sin of death, they're gonna come into the glorious light and be radically saved. This is the year of salvation. Between now and the end of the year, you're going to see your loved one get touched, healed, delivered, sanctified, and set free. The Spirit of the Lord wants you to remember Joshua 24 and 15, which declares, if one in the house serves me, so shall the whole house. This is a season where God wants to what? Save the whole house. He wants to use you to be a catalyst between now and the end of the year to speak a word that encourages your family to come see. The moment they come in and experience the presence of God, the Spirit of God will do what he does best, change lives. How many of you remember Acts chapter 16, the Philippian jailer, after Paul experienced an earthquake, the chains fell off, prison doors opened, the guard is about to fall on the sword and take his own life. In the midst of darkness, Paul hears the sound of the sword coming out and he says, don't hurt yourself. Don't harm yourself. We are all here. When the prison doors opened, can I tell you what happened? It wasn't just for Paul and Silas. It was for every man in the prison. I'm here to proclaim to you, God is about to open the doors that had held your family in captivity. They're not going to run away they're going to run to the house of God and be mightily saved. The Philippian jailer said these words to the apostle Paul, what must I and my family do to be saved? And he simply declared, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you this is the hour in which God is calling this house to believe. It is the hour of salvation. It is an hour of killing. It is the hour for transformation. Who's ready to see God change us? thing. Well, let me just put this thought in your spirit. Worship is not what we do. Worship is who we are. We have a mindset that worship is earthly, but it's not because you believe that when you pass from the earth to the heavens, you will worship him forever. 
Do you understand that worship is not an earthly expression? It's an eternal understanding. So you stand in worship. You're worshiping with eternity. And when you understand that you have the power to bring heaven to the earth, you'll begin to open your mouth and sing. I hear the Spirit of God saying, it's your season to sing a new song, a song of change, a song of transformation, a song of killing, a song of deliverance, a song of freedom over your family when you pray. How many of you are ready to be a voice, a song, an expression that brings change. Remember in the book of Genesis, the earth was void, covered in what? Darkness. And it says, and the spirit of God was what? Hovering. Do you know what the word hovering means? It means brooding. The word to brood is a word that translates and means to give birth like a hen over her hatchlings. She's brooding over them until they what? Come of age. Do you realize that God hovers over darkness? The prophetic word that I hear the Lord saying to the house is wherever it's dark, I'm about to move. I'm about to open my mouth and I'm about to release a word that brings transformation to your family family who here can get excited because your member is about to be saved someone dwelling in darkness is about to come to a glorious light who here is ready to see God move upon the heart of your family come on if so say yes Isaiah 65 the Bible declares in verse number 13 new wine is found in the cluster the word cluster means the seed of man the Bible says, do not destroy it for the blessing is in it. The world wants to crush the, the root of family. It wants to destroy the family nature, the family culture. But can I tell you what God's doing? He's raising up a people right here at the way that believe in the family. He's raising up a people that believe in the culture of we're all together lovely. He's raising up a culture that we're better together. And when your family begins to hear the song and the message, light is about to shine in their darkness and they're about to be radically saved. Come on, if you believe that tonight, give them a shout. And so as I was worshiping, the Spirit of the Lord dropped a thought into my spirit it's a very familiar portion of scripture it's found in the book of Luke the 15th chapter starting in verse 11 the Bible says that there was a certain man say certain man that means he was a man that was set apart he wasn't ordinary he's extraordinary just like you the Bible says that there was a certain man who had two sons do you realize when the Bible shows a depiction of two it's speaking of the Christ nature and an old man nature and there has to be a transformation. That's why there was a man by the name of Jacob that became Israel. When did the transformation take place? After a wrestling match, after God dislocated the hip. When he dislocated, he dislocated an old man, old nature by the name of Jacob. And then he relocated, rehoused a new man called Israel. One who struggled with God and man and prevailed. This is what salvation is about. It's about bringing a man to an understanding that his struggle can end. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, I'm about to kiss my people. Who here wants to be kissed by the Lord? So the word of God says that there was a certain man who had two sons and one came to him and said, Father, give me my livelihood or give me my inheritance. But the father was wise and he didn't give him his inheritance. What did he give him? He broke off out of his abundance, his surplus. He broke off and gave him out of his surplus. The Bible said the young man took the money and he went and wasted it on prodigal living the bible says when he spent all say all. all what did he have left no he had a whole lot left he had pride he had arrogance he had confusion he had frustration he had hostility he had a whole lot going on in his heart but the bible says when he had spent all something happened a famine came when the famine came pride kept him 
from coming home. How many of you know when you have pride and you know what's right, the right thing to do, pride will tell you, no, nope, you don't need to. And so it'll cause you to take a stand in the wrong place. When you stand in the wrong place, you attach to the wrong people. And so this young man begins to do something. He attaches himself to a foreigner, a man of another city, a man of another character, a man with a different type of nature. He went and he joined himself. The word join is the word to attach. It's the word that literally means he glued himself to something different. When famine came, instead of allowing his heart to be humble and allow pride to fall and come home, he simply drifted further and further away. He went and joined went and attached to a foreigner of another country. Can I proclaim to you, foreigners worship different gods. Today, many of your family members have attached to themselves to foreign things. I loved what you were doing in the smashing of idols because you were breaking strongholds and powers and principalities because you already are moving in the sound of freedom. Watch how powerful this is. The Bible said he attached himself to a foreigner of that city and this man had a mission and he said these words go out into the field and feed the swine but this young man rose up with hunger great hunger and the Bible says and he couldn't even eat the pods that the pigs ate the foreigner did not love him the way his father did. The things of the world treated him, but didn't treat him like his father. As this young man grew deeper and deeper into the muck and the mire, something began to click. He had a suddenly. Can I proclaim to you that the suddenly of the Lord is about to come upon your family. Their eyes of understanding are about to be open. They're about to have a revelation of Micah chapter 7 verse 8, where the Bible says, enemy, do not reject rejoice over me. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I'm here to prophesy that the Lord will be a light to your family and set them free. A day of salvation is coming. A day of healing has been released. A day of deliverance is dawning upon the heart of your family. All you got to do is continue to sing out and give them praise and thank him that salvation will come because 2023 is the year where family gets radical say it's where dead things come to life where barren things become fruitful broken things become healed it's where barriers are removed and strongholds are pulled down and glory is established who here is ready to see the glory so the young man in the midst of the mire he has a revelation and listen to what he says he said I have sinned against the God of the heaven and my father in the earth. He said, as I sit here in this mire, I've come to an understanding that my father's servants have bred despair and I perish with hunger. Listen to what he said. Even my father's servants... Even the slaves in my daddy's house have abundance. Here I am attached to another father. See, there is some in your family that is run away and they've attached themselves to another type of father, a foreigner, one that serves different God, one that has a different mentality, one that doesn't love, one that doesn't provide, one that doesn't care. And when they're dwelling in that mire, in that dark place, guess what God will do? He'll give them a revelation your father's house where you said it was bad it's not that bad in your father's house where you thought it was unfair it's not unfair the place you thought it was crazy it's actually right and suddenly the young man comes to a revelation and he said I must repent and go home and watch what happens he rises up he leaves the foreigners field and he begins to journey home the Bible says that the father was in intercession the Bible teaches us that the father saw his son afar off. This was not natural sight, this was spiritual insight. 
He knew when the atmosphere shifted. I'm here to proclaim to you that God is raising up fathers and mothers of people that understand the time and the season, of people that understand that you're not thermometers, but you're thermostats, you're regulators of atmosphere. And when something shifts, you go, hmm, something's in the air. You say, hmm, something has just shifted. The father was a thermostat. He, he recognized that something in the atmosphere changed, so something on the inside of him said I must arise when the father got up he breaks Jewish custom the Bible says that he ran past the gate of the elders he moved past the city line and I'll tell you why the gate of the elders is what kept Israel in peace the gate of the elders, when a son was reviled, these men had the right to stone. These men were law-abiding citizens. When you failed and came up short, they would condemn you and judge you. And so the father recognized, no, 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 my son, he's not worthy of death. He's just been in an identity crisis. He's, he might be bound, but he is good. He saw a future and a hope in him. So he had to rise up and run past the gate of the city. And when he does, can I tell you what? he does he sees his son and he runs to him and he falls on the neck did you know that the bible says judah you shall possess the neck of your enemy the neck that was being broken was the neck or the yoke of bondage that was attached to him. When the father ran past the gate of the city, he falls on the neck and he breaks the bounds. He breaks the bonds of sin. He removes the yokes of bondage and he sets a man who is captive at liberty. But the father doesn't stop there. The Bible says the next thing the father did is he kissed him. Can I proclaim to you, this kiss is not phileo. This kiss is not agape, two words for love. This kiss is more powerful. This kiss is greater than we can comprehend. It's a Hebrew word called nesach. And I know you don't know what it means, but let me tell you what it means. By definition, it means to equip with weaponry. It means to outfit a man to overcome come his battle his trouble his struggle his hardship it means to put upon a man can I tell you that when the father came and kissed the son he began to equip him to overcome the battle I hear the spirit of the Lord saying I'm about to kiss your family I'm about to kiss your son your daughter your brother your sister your auntie your uncle your wife your husband your family I'm about to kiss them with a kiss that sets them free who here is ready to receive a kiss that changes everything come on if you believe it say yes I'm about done watch this watch this so when the father falls on the neck he breaks the yoke and the next thing he does is he kisses his son he doesn't kiss him on the lips he doesn't kiss him on the cheek greet the man with a holy kiss. He wasn't French. He was a man under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And you know where he kissed him? On the crown of the head. It's a sign of fatherly affirmation. It's a sign that a mind has been affirmed. How many of you know the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Can I tell you that God wants to change the way a man thinketh. He wants to heal the heart and deliver them from darkness and bring them unto glory. Who here wants to see your family get kissed by the Lord? This kiss is not ordinary. It's extraordinary. It's a kiss that equips. It's a kiss, it's a kiss that gives a man the ability to stand and overcome. You know what the Bible teaches us in the book of Ephesians? Put on the what? Because the next thing it talks about is about going out to war and fighting everyone and everything. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says put on the whole armor of God. Did you know that when you shod your feet with the gospel of peace, how many of you know Jesus is the peace that surpasses all understanding? So when you shod your feet, you put on who? Jesus. And it says, gird your loins with the belt of truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It's not a belt. It's a person. Then he says, 
Put on your breastplate of righteousness. How many of you know through Christ we've all been made righteous? So when you put on Christ, guess what? You're not putting on armor. Armor. You're putting on the person in whom you have been called by God to stand in. Put on the helmet of what? Salvation. He is the Lord who heals, the Lord who delivers, the one who sets free. So when you put on the whole armor of God, you put on Christ. And when you put on Christ, it's not to fight. It's to what? Stand against the wiles of the enemy. I'm here to tell you the reason why your family is caught up in darkness is because they've never been equipped to stand. When the wind blows, they tumble this way. When the current changes, they tumble that way. But what God is about to do is give them a kiss that gives them the power to be equipped in Christ so they might stand. I hear the Spirit of God saying, this is the hour in which I will give the people of the way and their family the power to stand and overcome if you believe you're an overcomer say yes, yes. all right let me just bring this thing into landing so when the father kissed him it's the word nasak which means to equip to dress to put on weaponry, to give a man a skill set to fight the battles of life. What's the first thing that the father did? He took his best garment. Here's a son that failed, a son that made a mistake. He didn't say, pull out my old robe. He said, pull out my best. I'm here to tell you, when your family gets saved, it's time to put your best on them. Because how many of you know, when you dress a man in something different than he's used to, it changes the way he feels about himself. It does something to something called self-confidence. It begins to boost him. It gives him a spiritual ego boost. He was no longer dwelling in rebellion and anger and hatred. He begins to say, I I kind of like the way this feels. Hey, I can this look good. Something about it begins to what? Cause his heart to rejoice. The Bible says that the son, excuse me, that the father doesn't stop there. He says, give my son a ring. Not any ring. His signet ring. Did you know that the word signet ring is two words put together? When you sign your signature on a document, like a man in the Bible would use his signet ring to seal a deal. The word signature is two words put together, signed nature. Can I proclaim to you, we know the ring to be covenant in marriage. Can I tell you what the father was doing? He was saying, I'm making covenant with you. He said, I'm signing off on your old nature. You're not an old man. Today, you've been born again and all things have been made new. I'm giving you my signet ring. I have signed my nature over you. Can I proclaim to you that when Jesus signs off on a man, he's no longer a sinner. He's a saint. He's no longer a loser. He's a victor. He's more than a conqueror. I'm here to prophesy that God is about to put a signet ring upon your family member and their life will be radically changed. If you believe it, say yes. yes. All right, let me get ready to bring this second closing to the near ending. He doesn't stop with a garment. He doesn't stop with a ring. What's the next thing he says? Put sandals on his feet. Say, hmm. Did you know that your feet, when you dream about feet or shoes, did you know that it's symbolic of destiny? A man that is barefooted is owned by the world. But a man that has shoes given by a father means he has vision. So here is a son that is visionless. Of course he is because he attached himself to foreign things, foreign God, foreign ways, strange truths that are nothing more than lies that led him down a deceptive path unto his despair, his sorrow, and his destruction. The father said, give him shoes. The reason why is he was declaring 
that his day of slavery was over. I'm here to remind you that you are not a sinner. You're not a slave. And you're not just a servant. You are a son, a daughter of the Most High God. Can I proclaim to you, when you pray, you don't pray in the form of begging God. When you pray, you make declarations as a son. How many of you know that when you understand your sonship, you don't beg your father for bread. You ask and he doesn't give you a rock or a scorpion. He gives you what you have need of. When you come out of slavery, you quit begging God and you understand your position and where you're seated in heavenly places and you recognize all that the Father has has been given to me. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 for I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings. Say I am blessed. So when he gave him sandals he ended his slavery and his son became a son. He was no longer attached to foreign ways, to foreign lands. He was no longer attached to famine that were dwelling in fields. He was no longer dwelling in the mire because his son had a revelation. What was his revelation? Even my father's slaves have bread to spare and had perished with hunger. When the father kissed him, the mentality in the heart of the son changed. God is about to kiss your family. 2023 was the year that you started your ministry believing that if one in the house got saved, so would the whole what? I'm telling you, I'm picking that up in the spirit. The beginning of the year, you go back, listen to the messages. It was all about one being saved in your house. One being healed in your house. One being delivered in your house. But now that you're 10 months, now soon 11 months into it, you forgot what was spoken. Well, I'm here to remind you, God has not forgotten your loved one. God has not forgotten your prayer, your cry at the beginning of the year. He wants to fulfill it. So finish this year strong and see your house saved. If you believe it, say yes. Can I have the gentleman that plays come and make a joyful sound? Because here it is. I'm landing. The father, after he puts shoes on his feet, he's not done. One last thing he says. What is it? He says, kill the fattened calf. Say party. Can I tell you how many of you know we're about to enter into the harvest season? Then we're about to be into all the holidays where there's nothing but what? Food and parties. Can I tell you when you come to that time of the year, we often worry about our weight, but I want you to begin to think on how God miraculously healed, saved, and delivered my family. He said, kill the fattened calf. Have a big party. My son was lost, but now he's found. My son was blind, but now he sees. My son was dead, but now he is what? Alive. 2023. 23 means from death to life. This son, man, this son, this young man went from being dead in sin to being alive in Christ. I'm here to prophesy to the way world outreach and your family. Those that have been dead in sin are about to experience resurrection life because God is going to kiss you that you might kiss others. If you believe that's the word of the Lord for your house, give them one more shout of praise. Lift up your hands. If you know that God wants to move in your family, come to the altar really quick. You know that God wants to save somebody, heal someone, deliver somebody. This is your moment. You know what God wants to do? He wants to kiss you. He wants to kiss you on the crown of your head. When he kisses you, he's equipping you to minister to your family. When he kisses you, he's equipping you 
to set your loved one that is bound free. When he kisses you, when he touches you, he's attaching glory, power, presence, goodness, mercy. He's attaching it to you so everything in your world can be changed. I heard the Spirit of God say these very words. I want you to sing out. And I want you to sing a new song. The day of singing songs of sorrow. Of what could have and should have been. It's over. The new song is placed in your heart. And it's a song of gladness. A song of joy. If you would sing joy over your family that is broken and separated and divided. He said I will cause the wall to fall. And I will repurpose it as a bridge. That they might cross over and stand together in unity I'm doing a new thing rejoice 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 with the 21 I heard the Spirit of God say this is a season to go and invade the backyard barbecues in this coming spring I see your family being in backyard barbecue when the weather is good you know what they're doing they're playing dominoes drinking beers they're parting it up can I tell you what I see I see a messenger in your mouth going unto them and just like Jesus turning over the tables because you're going to end their frustration, their despair, and their sorrows. You're going to preach a message of a king and the message of the kingdom and their hearts will repent. Jesus preached a message, repent. The word repent means to change the way a man thinketh. God says, I'm going to put a message of repentance in your heart. You'll speak it over your family. Their mind, their heart, their lives will be radically changed and they will know me because of who I am in you. This is my promise, says the Lord. Ha, good to see you, Rohan. Hallelujah. I'm telling you today, God is doing the radical, the miraculous. He's healing, delivering, sanctifying, and setting free. It's a day of fresh starts. It's a day of new beginnings. This is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He said, if you would just testify of every good thing that I've done and not hold back, you would see those that have stumbled, those that have fallen, those that have lost hope, and others that have given up you will become a message of encouragement and it will be air to their tires that will give them the power to ride again to move again and to step forward God says you carry a message of encouragement open your mouth and encourage your family encourage those that are hurting bound and broken and suddenly they will take flight they will begin to soar and they will become mighty overcomers the Lord said the kiss of the Lord is upon you you have the gifting and the skill set to equip a people with words of life words of hope you're a carrier of glory for this appointed season says the Spirit of God my goodness I'm seeing so many different things taking place in the lives of the people please pastor help me stay in tune with time because I'm kind of lost right now this young lady with her hands stretched out in glasses I heard the Spirit of the Lord say let your mouth not testify against you let your mouth be filled with good news let your mouth be filled with encouragement don't be discouraged by what you see hold steadfast to 2 Kings chapter 6 when the servant of the prophet came in after seeing the mountain surrounded by the enemy the prophet said fear not I hear the spirit of God say the enemy tries to bombard you with things that create fear in your life but I hear the spirit of God saying fear not and as he said that to the servant he prayed Lord open his eyes that he might see what I see and when his eyes were open he saw the angelic host he no longer saw the army that came to create havoc. He saw the angelic presence of God. The Lord says in this next season, you will not see the struggle. You will see the answer. You'll see the glory of God descend over your family and they will be radically changed. This is my promise to you. Come on, if you believe God is bringing a mighty move of God, raise your hands and give him a shout of praise. Someone say yes! Here it comes. Here, take it. Take it. This is the day of new beginnings, a day of hope, a day of transformation. I heard the Spirit of God say, the rooster will crow. And as the rooster crows, he trumpets a brand new day. He said, I'm trumpeting a new day over your family. The day of sorrow, the day of pain, the day of trouble. It is no more. 
come on. This is what I hear heaven declaring. He said, this is a season where the glory of God will fountain because I've heard your prayers, man and woman of God. He said, this is where the fountains of the deep will break open and I will cause the, the, the things that have been settled, the things that are dwelling in, in, in difficult places to rise above it. I will cause your house to be made free. I will cause liberation. The Lord said, let the kiss of heaven come upon your family. Be not afraid to kiss them and set them free. I release it. Hey. In the name. Hey. Just pick her up. Hey. 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 Look. 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 It's over. Look. Look at me. It's over. It's over. You know what I heard the Lord say is over? The shame of your childhood. The shame of the things that came against you. I tell your soul right now. Soul, be quiet. Look. No. Listen. Your soul is being taken into captivity. Freedom has already come. Freedom has come. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Say, I'm free. That's it. Now rest. Lift your hands up and rest. Come out of this pain. Come out of this sorrow. Come out of this despair. Come out of this trouble and come into the peace of God. You don't got to fight. The battle has been won. I release it. This young lady in the white. Everything in your world is about to shift right now. I just saw the last three years in review. And it went from hard to, to difficult to ugly. Everything in these fat past few years has just seemingly been growing in negativity. It's because you've misinterpreted what God is doing. Hear me. God says, you are an arrow chosen from my quiver. He says, and you've been appointed to bring healing to your family. And the more you press in, it seems like the more crazy and chaotic your family becomes. But you think that God's failing and he has not heard you. He said to tell you, not so. He said, if you are an arrow, an arrow can only be launched if it's put in a what? Bow. Where you felt like you're losing ground, it's because God is what? Pulling you back. I heard the Spirit of God say to tell you, I'm about to open my hand. And when I do, you will hit the mark. And you will see a suddenly come upon your family. And they will be miraculously saved, healed, delivered. You will hit the mark. Because I have transformed your nature and your character. You will speak words of life and liberty. And your family will be saved. Goodness. Jesus. Jesus. That word tonight is full of life. That word is what you grab hold of. That word is what you dwell in. That word is what you recite. That word is what you quote. This is what you declare, it's my hour. It's my hour that my family gets saved. I'm telling you, I can hear it in the atmosphere. Salvation was the theme at the very beginning of this year. Healing, deliverance for families, for families, for families, for families. Oh, just lift up your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. Father, we cry out for salvation. We cry out for every member of every person hears family thousands upon thousands we begin to lift up to you we pray now that you would bring them out of bondage you would bring them out of addiction you will destroy the spirit of witchcraft and alcoholism you'll destroy the spirit of fornication remove these family members from pride from gangs from violence from lord from all besetting sins and all forms of iniquity i pray that the spirit of righteousness would descend upon them 
that you would open their eyes like you did the prodigal that they might have a revelation that in the house of God at the way world outreach they're serving bread Lord that a people would have a revelation that if they could get to this house they would be delivered that they would be set free that your kingdom would come upon them shackles and chains will be broken and the glory of a king will be established in their life I release life to their family in Jesus name if you receive it say oh yeah gentleman right here in the gray come up here you right here come here you yeah come up here what's your name hi John your name means beloved well loved Yachanan in Hebrew doesn't matter anyways your name means well loved I heard the Spirit of God say these words I want to kiss you I want to crown you with a kiss of affection to heal you from the wounds of your childhood. To take away your anger and your bitter heart. To take away this wrong identity that you've clothed yourself in. And to give you a love that surpasses your understanding. You're not here by accident. You're here by divine purpose that you might receive a call. You are a dreamer. You are very entrepreneurial. And God says, I want to make you a Joseph for my kingdom. Joseph's name means a man of increase. And he said, son, but the only way I can increase you is if I deliver your heart. And the way to deliver your heart is to change your mind. And how do I change your mind? But by putting a kiss and equipping you with the skills needed to stand. This last season, you've been like a flag whipping in the wind. And you're trying to stay firm and you feel like, God, I fail, I fail, I fail. The Bible says a righteous man, he falls, but he what? Gets back up. God says, I'm giving you the power to rise up. But he said, today, I want to kiss you. And when I kiss you on the crown of your head, he said, everything is going to change. He says, you've needed affirmation. You've needed love. And love has been far from you. You want to be loved so much, but you're so hurt. You know what you do? You push everybody away. But the Lord says, not today. He said, I am raising you up. I will do a new thing in your life. He said, I break the yoke off of your neck. And he said, and when I put the kiss of heaven upon you, everything in your life is going to radically change. Can I tell you what this love does? It makes a man weak in his knees. Hey! Ah! That's what the kiss feels like. That's what that crowning does. Now, it's the equipping season of your life. He's clothing you. Your rags, your garments are not like filthy rags. They're pure. You're not a man that's a, forgive me, but you're not a bastard. You're in covenant with God. You have a heavenly father who loves you. You're not a slave to the things of the world. He puts shoes on your feet. I'm here to proclaim to you, your world is changed. God in the heavens is celebrating everything that has happened in your life. Come on, if you believe radical transformation has come, say yes. Come here, there's one thing I gotta do. One last thing, because you carry a prophetic call I got to activate you because you don't even know how it operates. You just dream dreams. You just feel a thing, see a thing. And you don't even know how to speak it out. You just kind of say, it's kind of weird. I felt this. And can I share it with you? (laughs) So it makes no sense to you. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do something. Israel will tell you what happened. Israel is one of the young men that's in our ministry. I told him God is going to punch him. Not me, God. But what he is going to do is he's going to move deep within your heart. It's going to be more like a hammer. And it's going to 
hit your chest hard. But you know what? There's two types of hammers. There's a construction hammer that you guys were using up here. What do you call that one? Sledgehammer. It breaks things up. But Jesus operated with a hammer, a carpenter's hammer, that to build. Can I tell you what God's going to do right now? He's going to operate in the sledgehammer. And he is going to break the things that have kept your heart from being able to fully commit. Right? And when this happens, it's also going to begin to activate dreams and vision. But it's going to make you hungry to serve God and learn the ways of God. Do you want it? Just lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that my hand is yours likened unto a hammer and it's going to break the clods in his heart to pieces that his heart might flow in love, in power, in presence, that he would now love fellowship and love people, that he wouldn't be separated and do his own thing, but he would do kingdom business from this day. I pray for a fresh impartation of the prophetic to come upon him with wisdom and understanding. Make him a mighty disciple of this house. Let someone train him in the ways of God in a greater capacity. Let him be one who hungers and thirsts for righteousness. I pray right now that the glory of a king would come upon him. Ah. That's called prophetic demonstration this young man come here what's your name Christopher I remember you I love you man just lift up your hands you're extremely prophetic too and I heard the spirit of God say I am going to make you a teacher and a mentor to many many are going to come and say help me show me pray with me agree with me you carry a strong spirit of agreement the word to agree in the greek is the word symphoneo it's a harmonious sound the reason you sing is because you enjoy harmonies god says i am going to use you to be a sound of a symphoneo a harmonious sound where voices blend where you can't tell distinctly who's singing, but that's the power of agreement. You're gonna agree one with another. Families, brothers, sisters will be radically saved. The Spirit of God says, even as I embrace you, you're gonna feel the power of a new surge of the prophetic rise up, and you're gonna see the call of God ascend to another level. The passion of the Christ will wake you up at two, three, four in the morning, and you'll begin to say, God, what is it? And he'll put a word in your heart and he'll cause you to write down scriptures. You won't pray, God help me sleep because I have this or that to do. You'll say, speak Lord, your servant hears. Hey, God. The power of God is here. Where's Pastor Armando? I want to make sure I'm good. Come on, one more. Hallelujah. I, I try to honor time, but right now I'm in a heavenly realm and it's easy to get lost in his goodness and his mercy. I heard the Lord say, you don't have to be desperate anymore. You don't have to be overwhelmed. You go through bouts of oppressions, sadness, even times of fear and anxiety. And you have been praying for healing over anxiety. Can I tell you? Did you know that it is physically impossible to be a mouth of thanksgiving and operate in anxiety? God wants you to begin to say, I'm thankful for everything, even the storm, the troubles, the trials that this last two years of a roller coaster in your health has been. The Spirit of God says, Healing is coming upon you. Healing is entering your body. Deliverance and freedom from fear and anxiety. It is broken and a new day has come. Oh my God. Jesus. This young man behind the camera You can hold the camera. Yeah, I'm going to pray for you. 
Yeah. I know. God told me. Grab my hand. You know what I heard the Lord say? He said, you've been longing to go on a journey with me. You've been praying, God, I need, I need a trip. I need an encounter. I don't know what it's going to take. And he says, you did it. You served. He says, because you served my house and you served it with gladness. He said, you long for a word in your heart, but you said, I have a duty to fulfill. And you know what? So many times you've been sad because you've been saying, I've needed prayer. And for some reason, you're, you don't like asking. So God said, I had to point you out. And he said, I want you to know that I've seen everything that you're doing. I see you getting up and reading your Bible. I see you praying your prayers. And I see you earnestly saying, God, I want to grow deeper in your spirit. I want to know you. And you've been asking the Holy Spirit to show you the power of your friendship. You've been asking God to see angelic presence. You've been asking him to see more of what? The supernatural. Son, you have a desire to see supernatural things. And I want to tell you why you're a photographer and one that you're standing behind the lens and capturing. It's because it's all prophetic training. Do you know that you're up close on the stage capturing God moments? And when you go home and you're like, God, they encountered that. But you don't realize that you're a scribe to the world. You're helping a world see what God is doing right here at the Way World Outreach. Without the heart of a servant like you, people around the world wouldn't see what God is doing on the altars and the places in the crowd that you go and you shoot these videos and capture these moments. But the Lord says today, you know what I came to do? I came to kiss you. When you heard me say that God's going to kiss people, I heard you whisper, God, I want to kiss. Right? I, I did. I, I heard you. Yeah. He said, I want to smooch. Yeah. Put your head down just like this. Because he's about to take you on this spiritual journey. The kiss of equipping of my kingdom is coming upon you. Affirmation is coming upon your head. You're going to feel free like you've never felt before. The kiss of heaven is more than love. He says it's spiritual growth. He said today is the day of growth. It's the day where the Holy Ghost comes upon you and it moves upon your heart in a brand new way. Come on, someone say yes! I'm glad you found this house as a home. I love the way. I met him in LA at a conference called 10X or something. And we've talked on the phone on several different occasions. I just know that you're called by God. And I'm so glad you found a people that are your people group. And a people that pour in, raise up, train, disciple, pour into your life. I'm so grateful you found a house to call a home. May you and your bride, may you guys flourish. You know this young lady a little bit? I know. Can you come up here really quick? This is what I heard the Lord say. He said, butterflies will come forth from your mouth. I don't know why, but I see butterflies all around you. And you know what butterflies signify? Transformation. I heard the Spirit of God say, I have called you to be a mouth of transformation. When you opened your mouth, I saw butterflies spiritually coming out. 
And I saw these words as you were speaking to other women, sisters in the Lord, when you were speaking butterflies, transformation, words of encouragement, words of affirmation. It began to surround them. And I saw it begin to wrap around them all the way from head to toe. And I said, Lord, what meaneth this? He said, I have put words of encouragement in your mouth to transform broken women, to offer hope to those that are discouraged, to give life to those that are broken, and to give a future and a hope to those who have given up on life. You will deliver many from, many from suicidal thoughts. I will put the broken before you, and you will have a word that restores their heart and set them free. For I have anointed you for this purpose, to bring life, says the Spirit of God. Okay. Because you said it, I'm going to do it. Pastor's daughter, come here. She said, I want a word. I want a word. <laughs> Come here. Can I tell you what I heard the Lord say? He said, your countenance brightens the heart of people. He says, my word flows from your mouth like honey. When honey is put onto the tongue of people, it brightens their countenance. God says, honey will come forth from your mouth. It will drip on the countenance of the sad. Those that are broken, dwelling in sorrow, feeling like they have no hope and no future. A people that are dwelling in the lands of failure, I'll send you to them. And you will be a word like honey that will strengthen them, encourage them. Did you know that honey lasts for years? Beekeepers, they are some of the most healthiest people in the world. You know why? Because there's a sound. I heard the Spirit of God say, you operate in frequencies. When certain sounds, vibrations, and music plays, it just draws you in. God says, it's the sound that will move you. I see you playing music for your seed. I see you playing sounds. And there are certain sounds that cause a shaking to take place, a fluttering. It's the sound of agreement. The Spirit of the Lord says, there's a Deborah, a spirit of a prophetess that dwells within your belly. She's active in the weirdest, in the strangest of hours. It's because the Spirit of the Lord is upon her. The Lord says, there is times where you get caught up in worship and you get lost and then she'll let you know she's there. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, the reason why is because she's already agreeing. The Spirit of the Lord says, the child that will come forth will be a dreamer of dreams. It, the child will be one that is full of music. I see the keyboard. I see the guitar. I see sticks in their hand. I see the gift of God upon this seed. And what I'm seeing is the sound of Judah. The Spirit of God says, get ready. The sound of worship in your house is about to go to another level. The way you worship is the way she will on another level. She will be a carrier of glory. Where she is, so will my presence be. She will be like a gyrus that will fall at my feet and say, follow me. And where she dwells, I'll dwell. And where she moves, I'll move. She will be bold and righteous and she will be one that is tenacious filled with the fierceness that says I am called to take the nations you have a seed to the nations that is coming alive and I hear the spirit of God say I bless her as a prophetic voice to change the heart of many rejoice for great is the seed that I placed inside of you, says the Spirit of God. Come on, if you believe it, say yes! I feel like you got one more in you. I mean, you could go all night. It's who I am. I, I can't help but to prophesy. I can't help but to share words with people. I can't help but to encourage Pastor, I love your heart. You cry for people. You're a softie. 
Your heart is so tender towards the broken. But you know what you're filled with? You're filled with the grace of a great thanksgiving. Because you know where you started and where you are and the journey. I heard the Spirit of God say, this next season, <laughs> he says, it's going to be a journey. I see you on a big boat, on a cruise. And you know what I heard the Lord say? It's going to be one of the most relaxing and joyful times because you have well equipped you and your husband and trained many that the house will not skip a beat. I heard the Spirit of God say, this next season that you and your husband are about to enter into is a season of rest. And we all get excited for rest. You know why? Because we're thinking, whew, I'm going to lay my head down. I'm going to be able to take a break from things. But the Lord says, yes, you will have that rest. But there's a greater rest that I'm speaking of. In 2 Kings 4, there is a widow that the prophet asked, what does thy maidservant have in their house? Nothing. But a small jar of oil. She went out, came in, gathered all these empty vessels, shut the door behind her and her sons, and she took out her small vessel and poured into the empty vessels. She went to the prophet, and you know what he said? He said, go sell the oil, pay off your debt, and live in rest. I heard the Spirit of God say, I remember the sacrifice that you and your husband made. There was a house that you walked away from. There was a corporate office that you let go of. And he said, this year, 2024, is the year where that seed that was sown, I will provide the rest the portion that you and your husband did not know that I stored up for an appointed time. 2024 will be the year of the rest. Not just peace and tranquility, but portions that I have set apart for you and your house to come into. It's a new day of blessing, a greater time of prosperity. It's a new day of joy and fellowship. Get ready, says the Lord, for the spirit of rest shall come upon your house. And you know what I saw? I didn't see a short cruise. It seemed like you were in like European waters. And you were walking upon lands of beauty. And you and your husband had childlike love all over your face. It was a you and him moment where God replenished everything. God says, 2024, he says, your promise, he said, I'll give you rest. Two dimensions. A portion that you didn't know that I had for you and the peace that is needed. This is my promise to you for your years where you've said yes. No one knows the sacrifice. No one sees the tears. But the Lord said, I see them. I captured them and I bottled them and poured them out over you. This is the day of great blessing. Just lift up your hands. Stretch your hands towards. Father, may the power of interest, may the power of blessing, may your Barak be upon her. The way that she served and blessed others. Today, the Barak, the Hebrew word that means vice versa, what you've done unto others, the Lord shall do for you. May a fresh glory, a fresh presence rest upon her, and may the peace of heaven be her portion. I bless her and her husband the father and mother of this house. In Jesus name.
Come on. Give God a shout of praise. Come on. How many were blessed by this tonight? Come on. Give God some praise if you were blessed by this tonight. I'm going to close in prayer. Just bow your heads and pray with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for all that you spoke tonight. We receive by faith your word. Forgive me, Lord. I put my faith in you. I trust in you as my Lord and Savior. From this moment forward, my life belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. If you said that prayer and you want to give your life to Jesus, we have this code right up on the screen. Scan this code. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Scan this code right here. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for those that stuck around a little bit later than normal. But go ahead and pick up your kids at Kids World. God bless you. If you need prayer, we have a team up here, an altar team. We'd love to pray with you. Have a wonderful night. God bless you. Don't forget, Pastor Marco is going to be here Sunday preaching an awesome on-time word. Don't miss out this Sunday. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Remember, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. God bless.